what do you get when you combine dye from an indigo plant, metal rivets, and James Dean? Let's find out on this new episode of Color Commentators, presented by Pros Pondering Paint. The year is 1847. An 18 year old man who later was renamed to Levi moved from his home in Germany all the way to New York City, which is located in the United States. He got a job at his family's dry goods store where they sold everything from blankets to cooking kettles to hair combs. Business was going well, and in 1849, something big happened. A whole country away, they were pulling out so much gold out of the ground that it made Scrooge McDuck jealous. This was happening in California, home of beautiful beaches, scary earthquakes, and for some reason, singing dried fruit. You know, I think we'd do better off just making those guys into wine. Our young traveler felt that he could make his fortune. No, not by prospecting, but by opening a second location of the family business. Now, you could take a wagon train, but if you're wanting to bring a lot of stuff, like enough stuff to start a business, a covered wagon had, let's just say, limited space. So Levi took a steamship from New York all the way down around South America and back up again until he reached San Francisco, arriving in March of 1854. When our young dry good business owner got to San Francisco, he opened his store and named it after himself, Levi Strauss and Company. Mm-hmm, yep, that Levi Strauss. But how did he go from selling dry goods to owning the denim empire? Since it was gold that was driving the economy in the area, businesses needed to cater to the needs of the miners. They were always looking for a pair of pants that were tougher and stronger so that they could stand up to all the rigors of work. Denim was not a new material, but it was pretty close to a perfect product for this particular application but a couple of big changes needed to be made. Number one, denim is made from weaving cotton yarn, and there are still some parts of the world that make denim by hand. But as we all know, cotton in its natural form is actually white in color. So if they were gonna leave it like that, our jeans would look like this. Very stylish by today's standards, but not good for a miner or a young child that just can't help themselves when they encounter a mud puddle. The second problem, although denim was strong, it needed to be stronger. So how were these two problems solved? Well, problem number one, the color. They chose a blue color, not because it was neutral and goes with everything, but because it was a common and cost-effective natural dye that came from the indigo plant. About 25 grams or a quarter cup of indigo is all that's needed to make jeans a blue color. Not only did the color hide stains way better than white, but it also had another appealing characteristic. The indigo dye would only stick to the outside of the cotton fibers and not permeate the entire fabric. So when you wear it, then put it through the wash, tiny amounts of dye get washed away and some of the threads slowly unravel. The more you wash it, the softer and more worn the jeans become. The second problem was that the pants needed to be stronger. Now, even though when we think of denim jeans, we automatically think of this guy, Levi Strauss, but the reality is we should give some serious props to this gentleman, Jacob W. Davis. He was a tailor and came up with the idea of putting rivets in all the spots that took lots of abuse. Spots like the pockets. Jacob Davis took his idea to Levi Strauss since the latter was the owner of the dry goods store and was the supplier of the denim. They formed a partnership and on May 20th, 1873, the two men received their patent for the invention and the work and fashion world would never be the same again. Now for years, the only ones who would wear denim jeans were workers. 
cowboys and the occasional hooligan. It didn't start to become mainstream until this man, James Dean, who in the 1950s popularized them in his movie Rebel Without a Cause. His character in the movie changed modern culture. For the first time, denim blue jeans started to leave the working world and became a symbol of youth and rebellion. By the 1970s, jeans were such a part of the fabric of our culture that even old guys who would wear their jeans halfway up their chest could not make them uncool. So what do you get when you combine dye from an indigo plant, metal rivets, and James Dean? You get arguably the most iconic fashion trend in the last 150 years. It is a product that will go to work, but help you look good while doing it. Thanks for watching this episode of Color Commentators. I'm Brandon Kurtzbach. Please remember to like, listen, and share some time with your friends at Pros Pondering Paint.